Hey, it's Dan, welcome back. This is I Allegedly, and I've got a good one for you today. I am in uh, Dana Point, California at Strand Park, which is uh, just above some of the most expensive real estate in the state, but uh, it's absolutely got scenic views, it's absolutely beautiful, and uh, there is so much to talk about right now. Um, we're getting warning signs from the Fed, from Janet Yellen herself, on how bad the economy is. Plus stock economists and economists are telling us how bad things are. Before I get into it, please take a second to hit the like button, please hit the subscribe button, and uh, share this with all your friends and colleagues. We are getting, first things first, uh, warnings from Janet Yellen that we may actually be running out of money if something's not done with the debt limit and the debt ceiling. Uh, you guys, you know, whether you're a fan of Janet Yellen, you're not. The one thing that I get a kick out of is, it's like your grandmother or somebody's grandmother. And I, I really want to look at Janet Yellen and, you know, ask her questions like, what are we going to do for Thanksgiving? Uh, is it going to be at your house this year? But what we're dealing with right now is absolute lunacy. She wrote a letter to Nancy Pelosi and to the House of Representatives telling them if they don't do something about the debt ceiling, we're going to run out of money and the government won't be able to be funded in October of this year. Guys, that's next month, okay? So that being said, I'll include the letter in the video description below. It's absolutely crazy that we're at this point. Uh, there's a ton of construction going on down here with all these rich people. But uh, um, anyways, I'll show you guys different views of this. But you guys, think about that. Janet Yellen's issued a warning sign that things could run out of problem. And again, think about this debt ceiling nonsense. They just keep raising the debt ceiling, okay? Making it so that, uh, uh, you know, they just raise the credit limit, basically. One thing that I, you'll get a kick out of is uh, they have this thing called coastal access here, where you can get coastal access to this really rich area. Again, this is a very private community. The last thing they want is people like me walking through it, but because of the Coastal Commission and things like that, they have to leave these gates unlocked uh, for certain people so that we can get out here. So between 5 a.m. and 10 p.m., uh, you can walk through this. I guarantee there's somebody that is here at 459 and somebody closing this thing up at 10 o'clock in the morning. But uh, let's uh, show you some more of this. The next thing is, this is preposterous, and that is Jim Cramer from CNBC has issued six warning signs about the market that he's concerned about that we all need to look at. You know, geopolitical problems, the Fed, all these ridiculous things. You can read the article, but isn't it funny that Jim Cramer's worried about the stock market here in September? This guy has done nothing but buy, buy, buy and told everybody just to continue to move forward and that everything's hunky-dory. We get bad news like the 300 plus thousand people that file for unemployment today and that's supposed to be good news. It's absolutely ridiculous that over the last year we've had over 300,000 a day and we're supposed to celebrate that. But now one thing I get a kick out of with Kramer is this, is that forever, by the way, look at these houses behind me. So I'm elevated on this walkway. I mean, these are just absolutely insane. I mean, These are 10 and 12,000 square foot houses down there, guys. It's a craziness. But Kramer, Kramer's an imbecile. Kramer has been pushing, everything's great, everything's great, we're all gonna get through this forever. And in the last year and a half, he hasn't changed his tune. But one thing that I've told you guys I like to do is I like to sit down and talk to people from different industries. And one thing I did about two years ago was I had coffee with a stockbroker. And I loved this guy because this guy was, he started in the phone room for the company, worked his way up, went to college, got his degree, got his broker's license, and then became a broker for the company. And the cool thing with that is this guy saw every aspect of it. But when he worked the phone room, he had dozens of stories. And I'm not kidding you, we sat there for two hours hearing stories about people that followed Jim Cramer's advice and lost so much money, okay? 
One of my favorites was, you know, buy this stock because I'm going to issue the dividend. When a stock dividend is issued, uh, the stock price goes down that much that day. And Kramer doesn't tell people that. So one thing that's very interesting is you have people that would invest $27,000 and lose seven, eight grand in three, four, five days. Crazy numbers like that. And because he worked the phone room, look what you did to me. <laughs> the guy's like, I didn't do this. I didn't tell you to buy this stock. And absolute craziness. So, hey, look guys, there's a lot available down there. Probably pick that thing up for five, six million bucks, but uh, you know, the uh, man, isn't this crazy? It's just beautiful. But the point is, is here's a guy now issuing a warning sign. You know, Goldman Sachs came out and said that trouble is coming and we're gonna see a drop. You know, we've had over 300 plus days again that we haven't had a 10% adjustment in the S&P. Hasn't happened in, in decades, guys. So we need to have this happen. Do you follow Jim Cramer? Is he a guy you'd, you'd put money behind? I think he's a joke. Please share your thoughts. Please let me know. But again, these stories that this guy told me about people that invested and follow Cramer's uh, math, his logic, it was devastating. Now, I don't get a kick out of that. I get a kick out of the fact that these people just thought that the world was going to be perfect because they listened to some idiot on TV. So share your thoughts. I really want to know what you guys think and let me know. Now Coinbase, it's the largest crypto trading platform. They just received what's called a Wells Notice from the Securities and Exchange Commission. Now what is a Wells Notice? A Wells Notice is basically uh, a letter from the Securities Exchange Commission telling them that trouble is coming. Either they're going to be sued, they've got potential fines coming, they've got potential problems on the horizon. And all this stems from one thing. Coinbase wants to be basically a bank. They want to start paying interest, lending money uh, through their platform. No, it's not going to happen. It's going to be an absolute lawsuit festival from the SEC and they're not going to allow this. Now, here's the interesting thing. Let's go back a few years and let me tell you guys about a couple things. How about Bank of Walmart? Remember when that idea got uh, passed around? That's well, not gonna happen. Uh, they shut that down. You know, you can have a dentist in your place, you can have the optometrist, you can have the little side businesses, you can have McDonald's and Burger King and all that crap, but you cannot have a bank inside of uh, Walmart. Same thing with Target. Target tried to do the same thing. They got shut down. Why does Amazon not have their own bank? Same reason. So you're going to see this uh, get shut down. They're not going to allow Binance to be a bank. It will not happen. So again, the Wells notice, uh, it gets issued, but it also gets issued publicly to where the whole world gets to hear about this prior to any litigation, any fines, anything coming up. But again, you're going to see massive lawsuits over this and they will never allow these guys to be their own bank. It will never happen. Share your thoughts. Do you guys use Binance? Do you care? Okay. Again, cryptos. You guys into cryptos? Let me know. Lately, we've talked a lot about food and the ridiculousness of different products that have been uh, introduced to the marketplace. First things first, there is a company that is introducing fish made from plants. Guys, that's disgusting. Again, you don't want to eat fish, don't eat fish, but fish made from plants, guys. What do you guys think of that? Next thing is, you know, again, lab-based fish, okay? Now you can sit there and talk about fake crab and all that stuff in, uh, 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 California rolls and things like that but come on guys fake uh, fish made from plants the next thing is lovely Tesla that we love so much um, they just got a patent on having lasers for their windshield wipers okay which is something everybody needs um, so you can have lasers clean your windshields um, does this make you guys want to buy a Tesla more put that deposit money down you know I, I just, I don't know. 
I still not don't understand the fascination with these cars. Uh, in Las Vegas this week, they had a charging station, which was the only charging station available. It's completely out of power. And they estimated that there were over 80 cars backed up from Tesla to be charged. Well, it's kind of a bummer, don't you think? You just can't go and charge your car any place. So it created a real issue and there was lines of cars and it was a real mess. So uh, again, uh, I have a family member, drove to Vegas uh, this week and uh, got there on a tank of gas. Okay, so share your thoughts, guys. Have you guys ever run to a, a Tesla power station and been out of power? Will you be buying the lasers for your windshield wipers? Also check this out. There's a lot of different places in Laguna, Dana Point, that have these different steps. It's kind of a thousand step approach to the park. Really open, really nice. But uh, just a beautiful summer day out here. What's nice about this is after Labor Day, things really slow down and you have less of a crowd out at all these different places, even during the week. But uh, just a beautiful place to exercise and uh, like we talk about, to be by yourself and clear your head. But this place is just absolutely stunning here in Dana Point. Now to continue with the food problem, KFC just announced that they are having major, major supply problems. They cannot advertise chicken fingers right now because they can't get chicken fingers, which makes no sense, guys. You can get chicken breasts, cut them up, but you can't get chicken fingers. That being said, they're running out of major uh, supplies at all the restaurants, coleslaw, uh, macaroni and cheese, all these different products that they have at KFC that they can't get, and it's been a real problem. Next thing is beef suppliers. Beef suppliers right now are at an all-time high. Beef in the last year has gone up 50%, 50%. They're seeing this at Costco's, they're seeing this at butcher shops, they're seeing this everywhere, but it's also the price that the butchers have to pay has skyrocketed. They're seeing everything from ribeyes to, uh, uh, to sirloin, they're seeing everything. I saw a great interview today about this, but Costco is the one that's very interesting because Costco's done a lot of stuff with their pricing that has been absolute shenanigans. Look at these stairs, guys. So I feel better that I can do this now. But uh, Costco, okay, is advertising certain Wagyu products at $99 a pound. And you have to buy two pounds of it. So you've gotta buy $200 worth of steaks right now. Again, do you guys buy 200 bucks worth of steaks when you go out? Guys, look at this place behind me, the park. Isn't that beautiful? So, but you're seeing these products go up everywhere and you're seeing that they cannot get uh, a delivery of the franchises. Here in Southern California, there was a Taco Bell that was open 54 years, 54 years, and went out of business this week. Uh, now think about it, franchise fees, everything. Now Taco Bell originated here in Orange County, California, a little bit of worthless trivia. The guy that started the, the, uh, the company Taco Bell, his name was Glenn Bell. Okay, Glenn Bell started Taco Bell. That's why they called it Taco Bell. Okay, so Mr. Bell did that and uh, they had company stores and they had franchises, but you're gonna see more and more franchises go out of business, just like this one in uh, Laguna Beach that just went down. Again, 54 years. Mark my words, guys, between now and the end of the year, you're gonna see burger places, you're gonna see places, uh, hamburgers, uh, burgers are hamburgers, aren't they, okay? You're gonna see Mexican joints, you're gonna see uh, uh, coffee houses, you're gonna see these franchises completely go down for the count because they're not gonna be able to pay the franchise fees, they're not gonna be able to get the employees, and they won't be able to survive. Mark my words on this, guys. Share your thoughts if you've seen it in your own area as well. Now, one of the channel's favorite topics lately has been cryptos. And uh, Steph Curry from the Golden State Warriors, he issued a question to the crypto community and said, guys, what's my first step? What do I do to get started? And what's interesting about that is none other than Michael Saylor himself, the $3 billion man who said, I own $3 billion worth of Bitcoin, reached out to him and gave him some advice. So. Does that interest you guys? The fact that a celebrity or a pro athlete is asking questions about crypto, does that interest you? 
the next thing is Bitcoin ATMs. Have you guys heard about this? It's the easiest way to buy cryptos, they say. You can go in, you can use cash, get a slip. Basically, you can buy and sell cryptos. Has anybody done that? Okay, I'm really curious about that if you've tried these crypto ATMs. The other thing is, we've got the stock promotion here on the channel. If you want to get a crypto account, you can get buy and sell cryptos now on Weeble. If you set up an account for absolutely free, you get a free stock, which is super cool. So that being said, does that interest you guys uh, using these ATMs? Okay, there's like 26,000 across the United States. And uh, Steph Curry, you know, reaching out and asking these questions, I find utterly fascinating. But what I find most fascinating was that Michael Saylor himself reached out to him. So share your thoughts, guys, if that interests you. Uh, will you try the ATM? Have you seen one? Uh, I saw one, went to go take a picture of it, and it was gone. So uh, let me know your thoughts, guys, if you guys have heard about these, if you think they're the future, if you've ever tried or if you've ever used one. One thing you see in these very wealthy communities is an extensive amount of construction. And uh, it doesn't go without saying how crazy some of these houses are. I mean, this thing's at the end of a street. It's probably 4,500, 6,000 square feet. Really decent size. You see a tremendous amount of that construction going on in these uh, higher end neighborhoods. The most expensive house being built uh, here in California just defaulted on a $165 million uh, loan. Okay, that is insane, guys. They thought they were going to sell this house for uh, $500 million. Now, I want you to think about that $500 million in disposable income to buy a home. You're not financing that. There's probably less than 25 people in the world that could even purchase a house like that. But with construction financing, a fast experience with this, I'm very familiar with it. One thing that people do is they go out and get short-term loans where they pay interest only, but they pay a high interest rate, even 2% a month to complete construction. Now, I'm not saying that's what these people are doing behind me that we just showed you, but what it does with this construction, if you know you've got 45 days, 60 days, 90 days, and you're gonna borrow a million bucks, you can pay these high interest payments, $20,000 a month, and finance your project without credit checks, without conventional funding. And the problem with that is that with things starting to taper off and not selling, you're gonna have real, real problems with these construction finance loans. And this yeah. building, this house, the one, is just the tip of the iceberg. You're gonna see more and more problems like this because houses are sitting on the market longer. They're not selling like they were. You're gonna see interest rates hopefully pop up and right the wrong of all this. But guys, isn't that just beautiful behind me? It's just stunning. Anyways, I get lost out here sometimes doing this stuff with you guys. Here's a few stories that are kind of wrapped into one. And uh, I spoke to a restaurateur last night who told me that they are having nothing but problems hiring people. Have to close on Mondays now because they can't full staff the place. Uh, prices on absolutely everything have shot up from supplies, food, vegetables, beef, chicken, pasta, everything. It's skyrocketed. Now, that being said, there are 10.9 million jobs available across the country right now. The highest number it's ever been. So great story out of the AP about how ridiculous this is. And, you know, that there's people that won't work and there's all these jobs available out there. And here's something that's sad that was sent to me from another subscriber. And that is Walmart is getting rid of their uh, quarterly bonuses for employees. They're just gonna wrap it in to giving people a larger hourly wage. That's horrible. Again, these people are working a lot. Whether you like Walmart, you hate Walmart. These people sign these contracts to get this money and now they can't get the money. So what do you guys think about all that? Share your thoughts, guys. I really wanna know what you think. 
I'm going to close this video out with this final story, and that is from none other than Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft was going to have all its employees back in the office by October 4th. Not anymore, guys. They just announced that there is no return to work. Uh, so there is no scheduled time for them to be back in the office. Now, think about this, guys. Think about the, what this is going to do to all commercial real estate. Now, you know, Microsoft owns its own campuses and has its own buildings. Microsoft employs 181,000 people worldwide. They uh, employ 103,000 people here in the United States, but nobody has to go back to work at the office anymore. So I want you to think about this. As all these bells get you know, sounded for all these different problems with the economy, the commercial real estate is going to be an utter mess. And this is just gonna to add to it. So, you know, Microsoft isn't hurting, you know, you have to pay the license fee to have office now, which we all can't live without. But uh, I know people are gonna write me and say, I use this, I use that. But uh, anyways, guys, what do you guys think about this? Microsoft's not going back to the office. You're gonna see more and more companies not going back to the office, but what's gonna happen with all that vacant office space? Okay, share your thoughts, guys. I really wanna know. Please don't forget the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Share this with all your friends and colleagues. Also, don't forget a couple things. The Weeble, if you guys want a free Weeble account, you want a free share of stock, you click on the link, you get a free Weeble account. You don't have to put any money in the account. If you put money in the account, even a few bucks, they give you another share of stock for free, which is super cool. And uh, we've got Constant Contact as a reference. It's the email system that we use. And uh, you can also join our email list too. So please sign up for that. It's absolutely free. If you want more access to me, sign up for Patreon, guys. And uh, onward and upward. Hope you guys are feeling better like I am. Good luck, but a lot of warning signs in the economy, guys, for all of us. I'll see you guys real soon.